everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a project where we're building this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode, we're going to be going on a bit of a mid-season tour of the park to show you all what we've been up to in the past 15 episodes. If that does sound good to you and if you do like today's video, please do consider leaving a like down below. And of course, do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. I upload videos every Wednesday at 5 p.m. UK time. Now, let's talk about today's episode. As you can tell, it's going to be a bit of a different one. We're currently looking at a very nice overview of the park. And as you can see, we've actually done a decent amount in the past 15 episodes. In fact, I would say we're pretty much halfway done with the park. I'm thinking we'll probably end up with a total of just over 30 episodes. Now, what we're going to be doing uh, in the next few episodes is, first off, in this area here by the beach, I want to introduce the grey seals because we are coming up to the next DLC relatively soon, I think. Um, and uh, whatever that may be, I don't really know. But uh, whatever that may be, I want to get going on stuff with that one. And I still haven't finished the animal for the aquatic pack. So that's something I'm going to have to do. Of course, the penguins were here. I thought grey seals next to them would be a perfect fit. And of course, up here where we've been doing all our cold weather animals, I think some more down here will be pretty cool. Some bears, maybe. Uh, I think going down here. We'll have to do a lot of terraforming work, I think. In fact, this whole area here is perfect for a habitat, but it's really heavily forested, so we're going to have to clear that out. But as you can see, there's plenty of space still to be working. And even if we need to, we can really actually go across the lake, which I'm thinking we might eventually do anyways. So yeah, that's kind of what we're going to be doing in the future episodes. And then whatever DLC we get next, because we're getting the free update on the 30th of March. I'm guessing whatever DLC we get, if we get one, which I mean, we're pretty sure we're getting one, right? It will be then as well. So around then, I think it would be pretty cool to start diving into adding in some maybe some newer areas, whatever this DLC might be, I like to introduce those animals here as well. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. But uh, without further ado, let's get on with the tour. To do that, I need to find a staff member and essentially completely rewire their personal identity by renaming them. Let me just uh, collect one. And essentially what you do is you rename a staff member Tejitcam and ta-da! You're now walking around the zoo in person. So what I'm going to do is actually go right back to the start here, um, which is not that far away. There we go. So I'll actually just explain the entrance. So this is something we did a long time ago before the aquatic pack was even um, announced. And I thought, you know, I didn't want to do something like I did with Sanikov Land, which was create like an exterior road and a car park. I just kind of wanted to get into the zoo and building. So my headcanon was the car park, the entrance is all on the other side of the mountain and there's a tunnel that leads through and this is where you actually enter the zoo. And uh, as you can see, there's a little booth here. I'm actually thinking of redoing most of this, um, this entrance because this is back when I still thought um, October Lake was going to be more of a nature reserve than an actual zoo. And then of course Aquatic Pack released and I turned it into more of an actual zoo. Don't get me wrong, I love the direction it's taken, but I think the entrance just doesn't really suit that anymore. So I really want to redo this area. It's still very pretty, I think it looks quite nice. Ooh, these guys are excited to leave the zoo. Thanks for your patronage. But yeah, um, so this is kind of, I think, what we're going to do as well in the next few episodes, just revamp this area a little bit. Or maybe I'll even do it off screen, it really depends. As you can see, you've got a nice view of like some of the stuff up there. You can just about see the capuchin habitat there, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you look up here, you can see the tropical house as well. And if you turn around, you can see some of the scaffolding and some of the nice cliffs up, up above. If you go this way, the first thing you see is this little shop area where you can buy some food. It has a little backstage area. Again, this is back when I thought it was more of a nature reserve and I made it very like... Kind of um, rustic and kind of like messy. Not like something they really thought about when they were building, for example. Like they were just doing it for practicality. But of course, now that it's changed, I will redo that. There used to be an October Lake sign here, which I've also removed because I want to redo it. And there's some wood there just for the backstage area, for the food area. And over here we have our first waterfalls, which I think look really nice. We'll see more of them in a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the plaza, we're going to see the penguins first, and then we're going to go check out the rest of the zoo. 
going into the plaza here, as you can see it's a nice, relatively simple plaza, not too big. A lot of picnic tables you can go sit at, have a little snack, a statue of some deer in the middle. Which is kind of funny because we don't actually have these deer in the game. I would love to have some regular deer, I think that would be cool, like some fallow deer or some red deer, that would be pretty cool. Here you can buy some food of course, there's some food stalls, there's a toilet in there as well if you need it. Uh, lots of different food stalls over there as well. Lots of greenery of course. This park, even though I said it's more of a zoo than a nature reserve, I really want to bring nature in every opportunity I can. Which is kind of like a, a common theme for most zoos. But yeah, more food here. If you want to withdraw some money, there's an ATM there. There's some vending machines. There's vending machines everywhere. But yeah, generally it's a pretty nice plaza, I think. And you can even just sit on one of these and yeah, enjoy your day. But everywhere in the park you go, you actually have a pretty cool view of everything. You can see the tropical house up there, very nice, the waterfall. Uh, you can see that's where the otter habitat is. And the big set of stairs leading you up. And the elevator shaft. I think that whole structure is pretty cool. Anyways, let's go check out our penguins. So before you enter the penguin area, you actually have this little uh, stand over here, which is for animal talks. And what you can do is you can sit up here while the um, well, the guests can't actually sit up here, it's not something that works, but um, what will happen is you'll have the animal educator person be over here talking about the penguins, and the penguins are of course right there, you can actually see quite a few of them. None of them are swimming, actually that one's swimming over there, but what you can do is you can sit up here and you'll hear the talk, they'll talk about penguins, you can see the penguins, I think they'll be, I like it's a pretty cool idea and it looks nice. I love the yellow like banding just to give people an idea like so they don't trip and stuff. I think this looks quite cool. And of course the stairs leading up as well. Um, and there's a bench here for some reason. Cannot remember why I put a bench there. I love these sapling trees by the way, they just add a lot of like nice um, height variation because a lot of the trees are quite big. So here we go, we can enter the penguin kingdom, um, the kingdom from here. Of course I called it a penguin kingdom because these are king penguins. Excuse me if you hear some sniffling by the way, I still have a little bit of a cold. Actually, I think it might not be a cold, I think it's a pollen allergy, but you know, I can't tell sometimes. Here over here you have the more shallow pool for the penguins to enter through. As you can see it is quite shallow. Uh, so they don't dive in this area, but they do like float on the surface. You can see there's one of our dudes right there. What a cutie. These guys are so adorable. I love them. But they have multiple waterfalls, so that's uh, something quite nice. And I love the height difference in the water here. Like this is quite shallow and it's kind of open to the air. And over here it's more like an aquarium. It's completely underwater. There's some shelter for the penguins up there. But you can see them all swimming around. There's some diving actually in the back. But yeah, I, I think this looks pretty cool. Um, I didn't actually add any of the signs yet for the penguins, like, you know, to say what they are. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think that's going into the tunnel. Yes, there's an underwater tunnel, of course. Here's some more, um, ooh, that is really cool. But yeah, it's pretty cool seeing them. I'm very excited for this 1.5 update because we'll be able to change the color of the water and stuff, and that's gonna be so cool. Very, very excited for that. And it's gonna be able to make the water clearer as well, so we'll be able to see our animals a bit better. Here, once again, another look into the um, penguin habitat. Here, you can actually see some of the um, archers and stuff they swim to which I think is cool. Here again, a bit more of a shallow look at the water. Even though on this side they're actually both the same level, but that's pretty cool. Here you can go upstairs, um, but first off you can look over here, and this is actually our animal care center. Mostly done off screen actually, but it's a really big structure, um, and this is where the vet and everything is located on the inside. And I still need to detail a lot of this building, but uh, for now it's just where the vets are. And if you want to go upstairs, of course, you can use the stairs or the lift over there. The lift doesn't actually work for the guests, but I think it's nice to add them to give that like idea that, you know, we do have lifts if you want to use them. Here's some little canopies to look into the penguin habitat. There's 60 of them in here, which is kind of crazy. I've never put that many animals in a habitat. As you can see here, they are hanging around. No babies, but that's because I've been really careful with this park. Like, out of the 60 penguins here, I believe only only five of them are not on contraceptives. This is very specifically so that we don't get an overpopulation boom because that would be a nightmare to deal with. I've had to deal with that in Sanikov land, my old park, uh, which we'll return to next month I think by the way. 
uh, but I've had to deal with so many animals really overpopulating. I think my gorials in that park are like, I have like a hundred of them now or something. And like 90 of them are babies, so yeah, I just, I didn't want to deal with that. So if they do have babies, it will be like more of a rare event. Um, oh my god, these guys are so cute. I love them so much. These are easily one of my favorite animals in the game right now. Absolutely beautiful, adorable animals. And I think this habitat is easily one of my favorites as well that I've done. Um, like, period. It's, it's really nice, and I think the, the uh, rock work looks good, the colors of the rocks. The four rocks in general are some of the best additions to this game. Like, in general, it's so good. But yeah, anyways, um, as you may notice, by the way, the flooring is all custom. Uh, I say custom like it's a big deal. It's literally just putting down stained wood pieces instead of the, the aquatic flooring, because I love the railings, just in like the flooring itself. But you look down the sides, and uh, yeah, you can see more of the penguin habitat. And it's, uh, yeah, a really nice habitat, I think. They, can, they have some height here, they can go up if they want. They don't use it very often, but they can if they like. And there's still more canopies to keep you, keep you dry if it rains, and keep you away from the sun. Okay, that's that for the penguin habitat. I want to keep it relatively snappy, because I know if I take this level of time with each habitat, it's going to take forever to get through the park. But uh, we have maybe like 15 habitats to get through, so that's not too bad. Or 14, because we did do like one initial like starting episode, so I think 14 habitats. But yeah, very cool um, look at our penguins, really lovely guys. I, uh, yeah, I say that like they're work colleagues, but um, no, they're just cool animals. <laughs> and here's this all this big stair structure, I want to take the long way around. We have a little fountain here, which I like. God, I'm so glad I have this like new computer now. My old computer, my laptop, would not have been able to handle anything close to this. Here's a little pound, by the way. Like it would have been stuttering, the frame rate would have been like 10, you know. But yeah, we can go up this. There's lots of ramps as well, if you want to just take the long way around and enjoy yourself and look at the waterfall. Or if you just need that um, access, if you, for example, have a disability or something. So there's ramps, there's tree planters. Ah, this is one of the first things I built in October Lake. And I built it specifically so I had a bit of a challenge. Um, kind of to revitalize my interest in the game because I built this back when I had taken like a two month hiatus from the channel because I was moving, I had loads of things to be doing and I just could not find the time. And I wasn't even like in a stable accommodation at the time. So I was just completely off the game for a bit. But then coming back in and building this, I just found my love for the game quite, quite revitalized, I think. So here we are, up at the top, you can of course take the lift as well. Whenever I say that, you know what I mean, it's not like for real, but... Um, this entire top area is meant to be a bit of an observation hut, you can get a great view of the lake if I was slightly taller and not looking at this wooden bar, so I'll look through here. So that's October Lake itself, the mountains in the background, and we have a little display here which is like an abstract look at the mountain so I imagine that this would be like if this was an actual mountain range these would be all labeled and stuff I just used like some uh, rooftop pieces and stuff to kind of get that look I think it looks pretty nice over here we have an observation deck mainly to observe the waterfall and the pond below I think that looks pretty cool what I want to do here is maybe add a little bit more depth to this top layer so it looks like the water is coming out from somewhere so that's something I'll probably do I love these um, Himalayan, I think they're Himalayan, no they're not Himalayan birches are they? Yeah I think they're Himalayan birches, they look really good, especially with the craggly roots and stuff, they look like they're wrapping around the rocks, I think that looks nice. Plenty of bamboo and you can of course see the, the glass portion of the tropical house which I think looks so good right here, this is a good, like a shot I really love. Anyways there's some extra, like just random grassy bits, which I think is kind of important, I always forget to leave just empty space. So um, I think that looks pretty nice, just some empty space there. And uh, here we are up at the first level. There's some shops here um, and of course just staff areas in general and some stairs. We go this way and here is the otter habitat. I like this little otter display here with the bronze statues, they're pretty cool. But this I think I'm going to revamp entirely. Oh my god, all the otters are just like floating there. But what I really want to do is revamp the entire otter habitat. This is one thing I did when I first got my hands on the aquatic pack. But I'm no longer that keen on it. I think it looks a bit too big. I think um, it doesn't look 
it just doesn't really fit the vibe of the rest of the park anymore so I am going to completely restructure this at some point we probably will have an episode specifically titled like the auto revamp or something and uh, as you can see if you go in here there's a little thing but I won't talk too much about it because it will change quite significantly if you go up the stairs here you can see the otters themselves they are really really cute as well super adorable I believe um, we had one baby but they've just grown up so we've missed that my local zoo um, well not my local local zoo like I would say when I say my local zoo I say London Zoo but closer to me is Battersea Children's Zoo and they have a baby otters right now which I'm so uh, like I'm just annoyed I can't go and see them because it's you know um, closed because of the pandemic but they will open up next month I just kind of hope they're still babies by then, but I, I assume all this grow up pretty quick. Go up here, there's a staff area over there, where staff can just chill and maybe um, look at the animals. Of course, if you wanted a lift, you can use this lift. And everywhere on in the park, I believe, is disability friendly with maybe... I think there's one or two things I still need to like change, but for the most part, it is. And you can access all the areas uh, without steps if you need to. Going up here, again, better look at the staff area, that canopy, again, all of that I think will change. Just because it doesn't really feel like um, it fits the vibe of the park anymore. And over here we have the, this top layer with the capuchins and uh, the nyala and a couple other animals. So first off we have the uh, nyala, beautiful animals, gorgeous, gorgeous deer with these beautiful, I say deer, the antelopes, with this amazing striping pattern there's the two females um is the male anywhere males probably inside so we can actually have a look in a second a little bit of a dry moat here so you can be uh eye level with the animals i actually really like this habitat it's one of like what i thought at first to be more of a filler habitat but it ends up it has a lot of its own character it has this nice big oak tree it's shaded by the cliffside for the most part, but the light shines through just enough that you get this like dappled pattern. Looks really nice, I think. You go in here, I am quite proud of this actually, I think that looks pretty cool. But this is the Nyala habitat, and also if you look here, we actually have like a tiered planter, which you can mostly just see from the from above, but I think it looks nice. You go in here, and we have some windows looking out at the park, and if you turn this way, we actually have the indoor section for the Nyala. And I still do not see the male anywhere. I have no idea where he is. I'm just gonna pop through to the staff section and see if um, we can s see him. Oh, he's gone back outside, okay. But yeah, there's a staff section just back there. There he is. Lovely dark brown coloring, those beautiful horns and the striping. Lovely, lovely animal. Anyways, um, also I like doing these floorings by the way, just by the moats, I think it looks quite nice. And these are uh, Oh, these um, decal pieces really help because there's now I can add these grates and just look a bit more realistic. Here's the Kabuchin habitat, of course, that we built not long ago with the lattice roof. I'm still quite happy with this habitat. I think it's quite cool. It fills the area nicely. We have a few Kabuchins in here, I believe four of them. And they're all just hanging out, climbing around, enjoying themselves. I believe you might even have a baby at the moment. The only uh, annoying thing is that the babies, uh, for the most part, let's just go inside. The babies look almost exactly like they're adults and they're not even that different in size because they are capuchins, they're already very small. So making a baby even smaller would not be super uh, helpful long term to be able to identify them. Um, but yeah, it's in here somewhere. But I, I, think, I think that's the baby actually, there we go, hello cutie. Oh, it's so tiny! Oh my god! It's so adorable! But yeah, I'm really happy with this whole habitat. I, I was one of those which I really was afraid wouldn't come out very nice, but I think it looks cool. And turning to the left here, we have the rough lemur habitat. Again, another one of my favorites in the park. I think it looks great, and it is right at the entrance of the tropical house. As you can see, the big uh, entrance sign up there with all these tiered planters. Really big fan of this whole build, uh, I think it turned out pretty cool. And the rough lemurs are a new favorite of mine as well, <laughs> such beautiful animals. I've been saying that constantly and you know how I feel about animals, I love all of them, so you're gonna hear that a lot more. I'm not gonna apologize for it because they're the best. But yeah, so so cool. Um, they got plenty of climbing space as well and a lot of them do spend some time inside, so what we're gonna do is we'll first go through here. 
I really wish these dorms actually worked so they didn't just phase to the like thing. It's actually double layer as well because uh, the idea of an airlock I think is pretty cool. Here of course we have the glass area for the tropical house so you can look out and see everything. And I think it looks pretty cool as an observation area. If you go over here of course we have the dwarf caiman. I don't know if any of them are swimming. Oh uh, yeah there we go there's one. Just floating along in the distance. They're a bit hard to see. This is another area I would like to revamp. There's one diving. The only issue I have with that is that this area is so finicky that I might not really be able to very well. And I think it doesn't look like that bad. I think it looks pretty good still. Also here's the indoor area of the lemurs. I got distracted for a second. And they're just hanging around enjoying themselves. It is at a bit of an angle. The staff can enter from that side and um, there's a foraging pit and stuff like that. So they really do have plenty to do inside while they stay warm from the outside. There's plenty of lights in here by the way so it does look kind of cool at night. We might have a look later as well. Or maybe I'll just take some cinematics for you guys so you can see that part. Anyways you can use these stairs to get up here which is the other entrance actually. So we'll pretend we enter through there. And uh, as you can see this is a, the staff view of where the lemurs are. This is actually another one of the uh, exits to the outside world. And if you look here, this is because of the tropical house. In here, I imagine it's a lot more humid. There's a lot more tropical plants. These giant rhubarbs are beautiful. So like I said, this is for the caiman. You can look down here into their habitat as well. You can just about see one there. But uh, yeah, this is kind of an angled walkway up. Each of these habitats has a little animal. We're not going to spend too much time like looking for each one because it's going to take forever to find them. Like the poison dart frog is in there we are not going to be able to spot him, like, at all. So we'll, we'll uh, move on relatively quickly here. Unless they're big ones and we'll be able to see them. Nope, even the frog is hiding away, so yeah. But I think it's pretty cool to have this angle look at all these habitats. These, uh, interestingly enough, are not connected to the path and yet people have no trouble uh, looking into them. So that's pretty cool, I think. Okay, the snake's right there. See the boa constrictor? A snake that I actually personally want as a pet, so I'm looking forward to the day I can have one. Here's the yellow anaconda habitat, which is meant to be like, if you look at it this way, it's kind of meant to be a big, a big long habitat instead of a, a singular habitat, but yeah, the illusion works okay, I guess. But the anaconda itself looks pretty cool. I think we have another one in here. Yeah, of course we do. <laughs> it has to be. Um, it's in there somewhere. But yeah, and then um, if you turn to the left here, I don't. I never knew how to make the connection look natural enough. So what you can do is you walk up here, and then there's a ramp and some stairs. And here we actually have the diamondback terrapin habitat. This is one of the new animals for the aquatic DLC, and they're super cute as well. They're just floating there, vibing, enjoying life. And also you have an, a look at the dwarf caiman habitat from up top. In real life, um, if this was a habitat, I would imagine it wouldn't just be for the dwarf caiman. You'd have a lot of big tropical fish, maybe like some. Arapaima, some you know like big uh, catfish that sort of thing like Amazonian catfish uh, so lots of big fish I think were pretty cool so you exit the tropical house and immediately you can turn into the crocodile gallery and if we go in we have this really long uh, narrow well I'd say narrow relatively narrow uh, space we can look at our saltwater crocodiles and we have three of them in here one male and two females that's one of the females I believe Yep, and they can of course dive as well, so maybe we'll see that on our way down. Oh, also, let's have a quick look because we actually have two more reptiles in here by the side, two more arid reptiles. Uh, here we have the Gila monster, I believe. I believe because we're probably not going to see him. He's in here somewhere. And uh, on the other side we have the blue tongue skink. So let's just go over here and have a look at the blue tongue skink. Yeah, this one at least we can see. There he is. An absolute cutie. Oh, we have two of them. I forgot. There's another one. Very, very cute animals. Uh, as you can see, here's the uh, the crocodile as well. Just, just chilling. And let's go upstairs. This is one of the few areas I don't have a lift yet for the upstairs, so that's something I'll have to add. That's the staff area for the crocodiles. And here's the viewing area from above. There's lots of fairy lights as well. I think it makes it look very nice. And here's the uh, the above ground viewing area for the crocodiles. There's one of our females, 
and the uh, male is nowhere to be. Oh, there he is. Oh my god, give me a second. I'm gonna have to <laughs> uncrate him. I don't know how he got stuck there. Unbox, please. Oh, that's unusual. I'm just gonna move you over here. There we go, perfect. I'm just gonna use you to. I'm gonna rename you as well. Digit cam. Perfect. Oh, we've entered the habitat itself. That's probably not safe considering these are crocodiles, but let's go back out here. And yeah, you can see the male now. He is huge. I believe he has like a. When I uh, got him from the animal training, I think he has a stat of like 100 for size, so he's about as big as it gets for a saltwater crocodile. Ooh, the female's over there um, playing with the restraint feeder. That's quite cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Oh, nice. I kind of wish they would like like actually um, touch the stuff because I, I can understand why they don't. It's probably for clipping reasons, but still pretty cool. But yeah, these crocodiles are so cool. That keeper is just totally unfazed. Uh, yeah, but if you go up here, the, yeah, at the end there's a bit of a picnic area as well. You can just have some food and chill in the shade while looking at the waterfall. It comes from an, uh, like a stream up there which was built into the map when I started it. But yeah, I think this habitat looks pretty cool. It's situated right up against the corner. In fact, I believe the park limits are just beyond this hill. So it's a bit of a tight build, but I, I think it came out cool. Yep, there's the big male. Oh, that is a cool sight. <laughs> I love the fact that they can dive so readily now. That's incredible. And so ominous with those bright yellow eyes. Really, really cool. Anyways, let's keep moving before like I completely take up hours of my time watching these animals. Here's another staff entrance. There's an entire like staff underground like uh, infrastructure type situation going on behind this actually. Like, it leads down into the caiman habitat, it leads into the pangolin habitat, even um, a couple others. Speaking of which, pangolin habitat is one which I really like as well. Uh, there's a nice, like, indoor vibe to it. Well, indoor slash outdoor. And there's three of them in here, I believe. There's one over there. Let's just go inside. There's one over there. Um, there's a little foraging pit. Lots of places for the pangolins to hide because they're such shy animals. There we go, there's two of them. Oh, th oh my god, we have four pangolins? What? When did that happen? I guess I must not have turned off like contraception. I mean, turned on contraception until we have a few of them. Let's just hope they don't over- Well, I mean, if they overpopulate, that's fine. Like, in-universe, because pangolins are super endangered, so it's great to have more. But uh, yeah, very cool habitat, I think. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. I like this uh, sign for them. Overall, just pretty happy with it. Now moving forward, if we turn to the right, we have the Galapagos giant tortoise habitat. There they are, just hanging out, chomping away. Very simple habitat, it is right at the cliffside, which is quite cool I think. Um, one thing I have is this nice little staff entrance here, you can get into the back and you can enter that big old staff like underground section. So that's really uh, useful I think for the staff to get around easily. You can even go indoors, you have this nice vertical planter. And you can look at the um, the tortoises. It's pretty chill. They seem to be having a good time. On the left here, we actually have one uh, one section of our Japanese macaque habitat. They don't actually spend that much time here. In fact, I think we just have one here at the moment. They prefer to spend most of the time in the other section, which is a lot bigger. But I think this is a nice way to kind of give people a teaser of what's to come, especially because you can see the the macaque path right along the back for them to get between the sections. I think that's one of my more, uh, one of the things I've enjoyed building a lot more. But yeah, there you go. You can see one heading up onto the path. It's glitching out a little bit, but it, he's, he's getting there. Did you make it? Yeah, he finally made it. Good boy. Um, but yeah, um, this area, I think the, the cliffside looks pretty nice. I might add some more rock work to kind of make it look a bit more realistic, but I think it looks cool. Here's where we start entering the kind of the more modern section of the path, where a uh, so more modern section of the path. Where I imagine is where the park started to get a lot more funding and started looking a lot more like modern and sweet. And here we have the Okapi habitat. So going in here and immediately we can see one. It's a relatively uh, nice sized habitat for these two. They've got plenty of space to run around. And they, they seem pretty happy in here. There's just two of them. Uh, There's a slightly more outdoor viewing area as well, which you can look at them from here. Got a couple shelters, like a full unstable thing, and then an outdoor 
canopy type situation as well. But yeah, super cool animals. Very beautiful forest giraffes. I really like this, and it's also one of the more forested habitats. Oh, there's one actually on the um, on the elevated area, which is a nice little rock area that they can get to, they can use to get up high a little bit. Very cool. Turning back around, we have another one of my favorites, the red panda habitat. In fact, a lot of these more newer ones are like some of my favorite habitats I've built. This because they look quite cool. So the red habit, uh, red the red habitat, the red panda habitat is a walkthrough one actually, and. What I would have liked to do is actually put in like a glass um, door here so that you could have like the, the airlock system so the pandas don't actually get out. The red pandas, not the actual pandas, we don't have those. We might in the future. But they, there's our little dude walking directly over the path, perfect timing. But that was kind of the idea is you could have the pandas walk directly overhead and you can have a look at them. Unfortunately because I'm using a narrower than usual path, the guests do clip uh, through a little bit. You, to achieve this, you're gonna have to like really finagle the Q parts and stuff, but I think it's worth it. It looks pretty. Oh my god! Yeah, okay, there we go. Stop glitching out. Um, but it's pretty cool, and you can see they really enjoy the habitat. We have two or three of them. I think we might have three now. I think they had a baby, but yeah, really cool. I think to have them just walking overhead and enjoying their space, and you can walk straight through this habitat, and um, yeah, just have them walking all over like. That's such a beautiful, uh, beautiful, oh, okay, you're turning around, cool. But I think it just looks really nice. Anyways, you come back out and you see that we don't actually have anything here yet. Uh, thinking about what animals to put there. Leave suggestions down below, of course, I'm more than happy to hear them. And we come out into the big macaque habitat. This is, again, uh, one of my favorites in the park. I have a few big favorites, the penguins, the macaques, the red panda. Um, you know, just the tropical house in general and the lemurs, those are pretty cool. But this one is one of my more recent, like, favorites, I think. It looks so cool. It's a great view. Um, you can look right down into it. The water work, I think, turned out so nice. So many macaques. I think we have, like, 20 plus of them. So, like, maybe 25. And they seem to be enjoying it. I think someone just got released in here. But, yeah, they're, they're climbing all over the place. Um, you'll see them running from, like area to area, climbing across the, um, running across the waterfall, that's a great shot I think. And uh, they have a little space down here where they can hide, a little cave as well. Now going through here, you can also have another look at them from the side. I think it looks pretty cool. That guy is totally glitching out. That's the only thing with climbing mechanics is they do glitch out a lot, but when it works, and it looks like when it works smoothly, it looks so good. But yeah, they, they, I think they look really happy in there. In fact, I would be, if I was a macaque, I feel like I'd be happy in there. <laughs> but uh, here we have a little planter. If you go over here, that's about the edge of the habitat. You can see them hanging around. There's some enrichment items over there. You can see them used. I wonder if that, that one might be eating now? Nope. Oh, let's have a look. Let's see if he eats. You know, I think he's heading off somewhere else. Oh, 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 wait. Let's see. Yeah, he's eating. Oh, that's so cute. I love these monkeys so much. They're one of my favorite um, animals in the game. And probably one of my favorite primates in real life too. Oh, that leaf is sticking through. But yeah, if you turn over here, you can turn in and immediately you're greeted with the indoor section for the snow leopards. So this is the most recent habitat. There's one asleep right now and there's the other one just walking out as we speak. Beautiful animals, again, probably one of my favorite big cats. This habitat I am also a big fan of. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites, but uh, it is definitely a really good uh, habitat and I've used a lot of techniques I haven't used before, like these elevated fences and stuff. Oh, I completely forgot, we actually have another viewing area. So if we walk back here and you can actually exit this way and there's a lift that takes you up or you can use the stairs and you go up here and up, up, up and you have a top-down view of the snow leopard habitat. Because it is a big cat habitat, um, they climb really well and stuff. Of course, you have a lot more like... Um... Oh, is he going to... Whoa! <laughs> they're both out and about and being active. That's really cool. And they're both eating from their blood pumpkin. Very nice. But yeah, the fences are going to be a lot higher. You can see them up here sometimes. They come up here. And that's why we have these extended fences. 
But that's pretty much it for the tour itself. That's all our 15 or 14 habitats. I think 15 actually, because I mean, if we count the tropical house and stuff, it's only 15. But yeah, let's have a quick look at some of the animals from above. That, uh, oh, there's no leopards, it's so cool. And uh, of course, all these guys. And here you can see some of the areas you don't really see from the ground, like the planters and stuff. And you can see kind of how this area works, like how you get up here. And uh, there's even an area here which I assume is a staff entrance, which is accessible, I imagine, from like back there or something. But it's pretty cool. I think, I think overall turns out pretty nice. Looks quite nice over here as well. Some of the stuff you can't see. There's the backstage area over here for the staff and the staff building itself. Yeah, and then um, the cliff side, I think, it looks quite cool. Again, we're going to redo the entrance, but that is pretty much it for today's episode. So let me know down below what you think. I hope you've been enjoying October Lake so far. I've been having an absolute blast. Like, this park has been so fun to build in. It's just been so enjoyable. I'm sorry we don't have, like, um, an actual, like, speed build for you this week. I just didn't have that much time. And I thought it's a good place to have a break, take a tour of the park, kind of refocus a little bit, look at what we need to be doing, what we want to be doing. And like I said, you know, we're going to do a few things um, relatively soon, but not before the next few speed builds. So, for example, redoing the entrance and redoing the auto habitat. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. Next, uh, next episode, I'm probably going to be doing the grey seal somewhere over here. And then after that, the bears or whatever DLC we get, that will be probably taking up some time as well. And just a quick note, there's going to be a few extra episodes later on where we don't do any animal work. But what we're going to be doing is I'm going to extend, um, well not necessarily extend, but I'm going to expand the nature of the park to encompass a bit more of that nature reserve vibe. And what I'm going to be doing is actually including a hiking path that's going to go through the mountains. And it's going to go all over back here. And then I'm going to have like an observation tower up there, some camping sites. Maybe um, like a beach area, we can rent a canoe, that sort of thing. So it is going to expand so that there's more to do in the zoo besides just the animals. You can also like go on a trek, maybe go out on the lake itself. So that's something I really want to do as well. But yeah, anyways, that is it for today's episode. I'm just going to look at the park from here. And I think it looks so good. I'm really happy with October Lake in general, so I'm absolutely so pleased. But that is it for today's episode. Do leave a like down below if you did like today's episode and if you've been liking October Lake. Comment down below if you have suggestions for the next animals we add or suggestions for the park in general. And of course, do subscribe for more, more of October Lake and more Planet Zoo content in general. There's going to be a new update soon, probably with a new DLC. We're going to cover all of that on the channel. Again, Planet Zoo speed builds every Wednesday at 5. Do look forward to that. Uh, UK time, by the way. <laughs> And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.